Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Java. Here we're going to continue learning about if statements. Uh, now we've already been uh, discussing if statements and other control statements in Java in the previous volume of Mastering Java, uh, but that was sort of the basics. Here we're going to expand and learn the complete richness of how to make decision paths in your program using the if statement here. So let's start from what we already know, uh, and let's write a, a quick little simple if statement and then we'll expand on it. You'll see how easy this really is. Um, let's say I'm in a class and I'm getting a grade for an exam. So I'm going to create a variable called score and let's say that I get a 95 on that uh, exam. That's a very good score. It's almost a perfect score. So because of that, let me go and write a quick if statement to tell the student great job, you know, since they got a great score. So what I might want to say is if the score is greater than or equal to 90, that would mean they get an A, right? then I want to go ahead and print something nice for them to, to read. So here I want to create a code block. Let me go ahead and put an opening curly brace and I can jump down here. When I hit enter, notice that I have a closing curly brace that has formed. So here is a code block that is created. Everything I type in between these braces here, these curly braces, this one here and this one here, is going to execute if the if statement is true. And in this case, the if statement is true. So here I want to go and say system.out.print ln something like this and I want to put a nice statement great job on the exam something like that so this is what we've done before in Java this is stuff you, stuff you should be very familiar with so let me go ahead and press uh, run and it tells me great job on the exam now of course if I change the grade that I received to 85 right this if statement is not going to execute so when I run it nothing appears on the output here because the if statement was false nothing happened here program ended so let me go ahead and put it back to 95. So this is wonderful, but notice that uh, I've got some, uh, I've got a curly brace here, okay? So because of that, anything between this curly brace and this curly brace is going to execute when the if is true. So I can actually come up here if I wanted to and put another print statement. I can do something like you scored a, and I can put score. on the exam. So I can put two print statements here inside of this if statement. Let me go ahead and hit run here. You scored a 95 on the exam. Great job on the exam. So what you can see here is that the if is triggering and executing properly and everything between the curly braces, what we talked about before, a code block, anytime you have opening and a corresponding closing curly brace, this is what's going to execute when the if uh, is triggered everything inside of there I could have five more lines inside of the if statement if I wanted and they would all be executed here alright now we're going to get to the new part of this lesson what if we didn't score greater than or equal to 90 well we could write another if statement here I could put a statement if score is less than 90 I could do that but there's a a catch-all in Java and if you've programmed in C or in other languages you probably have seen it and that's called the else statement. So I can put else here. I can put an opening curly brace. I can hit enter. Notice that when I do that uh, Eclipse creates the corresponding closing curly brace here. Everything in in, inside of the else statement is going to be triggered if the if statement is, is passed over. In other words, if the if statement is false. So let me show you what I mean by that. I can put system.out Dot. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just copy this whole thing because this particular statement here is exactly what I was going to type in. Just basically repeating what they scored on the exam. And then also in here I can put system.out.println. You did poorly on the exam. All right. So obviously, if I run it, Right now, I'm not going to see this other pair of statements here because the if statement evaluated to be true. The thing you need to realize about the if-else uh, statement pair is that it's only one or the other of these blocks that is going to be triggered. So the way the program works is you come down here, if the if statement at the top is triggered as true or evaluates to true, then the entire block for this if will be executed and the else statement is passed over. It, it jumps over this guy. Right now, if the if statement does not evaluate to true, then we skip over this guy and the else statement does execute. So you can think of the else statement as the catch all. The else statement is what executes if none, if the other if statement above does not actually 
uh, evaluate to true or does not actually execute. So if I put a 70 in here, then we know because of this, this if statement is not going to execute. And because we have an if else pair one after the other, the else block will execute in this case. So let me go ahead and run here. You scored a 70 on the exam. You did poorly on the exam. So we can see in this case that because I changed the value of the score, this if statement did not execute, the else block did execute. So that's the only thing I'm trying to get across in this particular lesson is the concept of the else statement. You can put ifs there. You can put five ifs in a row if you want. But if you always want to make sure that some block of code executes in an in an if, uh, if an if statement does not execute, then you need to put it in an else. It's kind of your your catch-all, your guaranteed last resort. This code is going to uh, execute. This is just one single example of when you might want to print something out. Um, you know. Uh, uh, if an if doesn't execute, but there are many, many times in programs when you have an if statement, and if it's true, you want to do something. If it's not true, you want to do something else, and that's what the else statement is for. Now, I want to show you one more thing real quick before we close this out. I mentioned it, um, but I just want to let you know that, or show you, I should say, that you can have, this is a code block inside of this if. So you can have any number of statements. You can have all kinds of things going on in here um, inside of the if that gets executed. So I could say I like apples, for instance. And then I'll, let me go ahead and just save a little time. I'll copy this line and I'll, right after this, I'll paste it in and I'll say I like oranges, right? So since my score is a 70, this if block will be skipped, the else will catch it, and so then I will say I like oranges at the bottom. If I change this to 90, notice it's greater than or equal to 90, so because it's equal to 90, this top block should evaluate, and I can see here that I scored 90, great job, I like apples, so this block up here goes. It's only one or the other, never both. The final thing I want to show you here is I've I've shown you the if else statement pair in terms of an opening brace and a, cur and a closing brace to show you that you can have code blocks here and do lots of different things. But if you have extremely simple code with only one thing, then you can you can kind of get away with not needing this. Uh, remember we talked before, if you have a single line if statement, it would look something like this. You could uh, actually even make it simpler. You can You can leave it indented like this, or I can actually just put it right there next to it. Then I could take this out. I can take this out. If I take all of these things out, then notice what I've got going on here is a single line if statement. Let me go ahead and tidy this up. I have a single line if statement. If the score is greater than 90, then do this one thing. Okay, and then I have a corresponding else statement. You don't need to put the curly braces, what I'm trying to say, if your if block only has one line, if your else block only has one line. So in this case, the score is 90. We expect there to be uh, 90 on the exam. All right, and then if I go to 70, then we expect you scored a 70 on the exam like that. Now, you have a little bit of latitude. We've talked about it before. If you have a single line if statement, you could have the if and then the result right next to it. You can also put it right underneath. I personally think this is a little more readable because I can see this, the condition, and I can see the result, and then I can have the else there and the result, and it helps me read my code better. So let me go ahead and change this back to, let's say, 92. And we'll just verify that everything seems to be working correctly. So what we learned in this lesson is that um, the if statement that we learned before has a, is a little bit more richer use than you learned prior to this. The if statement is all the same, but there's a, uh, a partner called the else statement that you can put after your if that will always execute um, as a catch-all if your if does not execute or if it evaluates to, to not true. If it doesn't actually trigger, then your else statement will definitely trigger. It's very useful when you want something to happen for sure, even if the if does not execute. Um, also, we talked about code blocks with the opening and closing curly braces. We talked about single line if and else statements where if there's only one thing going on, you really don't need the braces. I personally like to put the braces on the screen uh, because it helps me read my code, but this is also pretty readable too, especially if you do the indentation. What I'd like you to do now is go off to the example that we have. I want you to work that. Um, you'll get some more practice with reading keyboard input and doing if and else statements as a result of what you read in from the keyboard.